My next patron question is from Marco, who wants to know why one Hollywood director has escaped career-ending scandal. How come David O. Russell is still able to attract funding and cast for his movies? David O. Russell has been infamous for his shouting at Lily Tomlin, getting into a fistfight with George Clooney, treating Amy Adams horribly on set, and other abusive actions over decades, like the whole Nice incident. You would think in the Me Too era he would be condemned for his behavior. However, it seems that many rising stars mixed with legends are populating his next film in production. Why is he still attracting big names in studios while others like Brian Singer or Brett Ratner were rightfully called out for their actions? That's an interesting question. For those unaware, David O. Russell is the director of films like Three Kings, Civil Endings Playbook, American Hustle, I Heart Hucklebees, and The Fighter. Like Marco mentioned, there have been a number of stories about his behavior on set, which often involves a lot of shouting at actors and crew members. One incident became especially infamous when footage was leaked of him arguing with Lily Tomlin. There was also a revelation about him groping his transgender niece, which has gotten some press. However, that does not seem to have affected his career, as he currently has a film in production at 20th Century, which has attracted big names, like former collaborators Christian Bale and Robert De Niro, and newcomers to his films like Margot Robbie and Zoe Saldana. You would think this would be difficult for a director of his reputation, even though some of his films have been box office hits, and plenty of actors have been nominated for their roles in his work. However, these incidents did not attract the headlines that Brian Singer and Brett Ratner's controversies did. And while actors like George Clooney and Amy Adams have publicly talked about Russell's behavior on set and will likely never work with him again, you also have other actors who seem to brush it off. Lily Tomlin actually revealed in an interview some years after the I Heart Huckleby set footage leaked that she really enjoyed working with Russell and would absolutely work with him again. For me, I agree with Clooney that this sort of behavior from a director is unacceptable. I reject the philosophy held by artists and others that negativity, forcefulness, and abuse are the best ways to motivate someone. I think it's a very negative line of thinking, and can leave some serious trauma for years to come. This kind of behavior can have a lasting impression that can turn a person off from a given profession. Think about the many talented actors and actresses who left the business because this sort of shouting and abuse was seen as acceptable for a while. There's also the incident with his transgender niece, which got some attention in 2011, but is not as widely known as other cases. The stories about Brian Singer, Brett Ratner, Kevin Spacey, Harvey Weinstein, Army Hammer, Shia LaBeouf, Louis C.K., etc., all got massive amounts of attention, and their names trended on Twitter after the articles about their behavior were published. David O. Russell, not so much. And the news about the actors joining his new film also does not seem to inspire a lot of online reaction. It's a story that has not been publicized a lot, so it's never become this massive controversy resulting in actors denouncing him and him not being able to get projects funded. Should David O. Russell not be allowed to make any more movies? Well, one hopes he has gotten better with his behavior. Something I've noticed with filmmakers and actors whose careers were severely affected by Me Too stories is they don't sound very apologetic. If anything, they grow a grudge and blame everything on cancel culture. With people like Brett Ratner, Brian Singer, and Louis C.K., there's a pattern of being aware they made people uncomfortable and then did nothing to change their behavior. With Russell, there was reportedly one incident with his niece ten years ago, so hopefully he learned quickly was wrong and never did it again. We'll have to see if other stories of that nature come out. I also hope his behavior on set has gotten better. If I was a movie producer or studio executive, I would have a no-tolerance response to that, as I don't think shouting at cast and crew results in a better film. Never mind the fact, it's completely detestable to treat people in that manner. This is a complicated and difficult subject, so I tried to address it as best as I could. Thank you for the question, Marco.